Today's review is sponsored by XGL, the new Extreme Golf League. Wrestling meets golf. Pile drive your opponent before they get a hole in one. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Q, the winged serpent. Everybody stay right where you are, all right? Don't move. <laughs> I'm a Larry Cohen fan. I think he was a very underappreciated horror director. You can tell that Larry Cohen loved B-movies. When he made a B-movie, he embraced it, not shying away from the fact that some of his ideas were silly. Whatever weird, goofy movie he was making, he gave it his all, and you can tell he enjoyed it. The Stuff is one of my favorite 1980s horror movies. <laughs> Killer Desserts, How Can You Go Wrong? Q the Winged Serpent is my second favorite Larry Cohen movie, and it was his personal favorite movie that he made. The film takes place in New York City. You all know how much I love city-based horror movies. Everything starts with a window cleaner getting his head ripped off. <laughs> I wish you'd take a walk. <laughs> The killings continue with people getting snatched off of rooftops and folks claiming to see some strange winged creature flying around. Two detectives, Inspector Shepard played by David Carradine and Inspector Powell played by Richard Roundtree, are trying to solve these killings while at the same time they're hunting down a killer who has been skinning people. Well, let me get this straight. You're talking about human sacrifice now. Willing sacrifice. They give themselves to the god willingly. While that's going on, a small-time crook played by Michael Moriarty discovers the hiding place of the creature and decides to use this information to his advantage. You've been sitting on this damn information. You could have prevented it. How the hell does that make you feel? Like a hero, because I'm preventing tomorrow's death and the day after that and the day after that. So kiss my ass. In public, on the Johnny Carson show. Oh, oh, Q the Winged Serpent is an interesting mix of two genres, a cop movie mixed with a monster flick. You've got two cops trying to find this serial killer who's committing ritualistic murders, you have a small-time crook trying to earn some money, and you've got this monster flying around the city eating people. <laughs> You could probably take the flying monster out of the movie, and it would still be a decent crime thriller, but it's the monster that makes this movie special. The Q of this movie is not some omnipotent being from Star Trek. Don't fret, Riker. My good fortune is your good fortune. It's short for the name Quetzalcoatl. Try saying that five times. <laughs> Quetzalcoatl is an Aztec god, the god of rain and wind. It's believed that Quetzalcoatl created humans by sacrificing its own blood. As a result, the Aztecs would offer sacrifice to Quetzalcoatl. They would offer up blood, food, and sometimes human sacrifice. Mind you, I'm barely scratching the surface with the information I'm giving you right now, so I do encourage you to look into it yourself. It's very interesting. I like when a movie takes a mythical creature and puts it into a modern setting. There are a lot of movies that do this poorly, but when you do it right, it can be very good. So, as you would guess, these ritualistic killings are linked to the creature Q. It's an interesting way to bring this ancient story into modern times. The monster scenes are fun. Q is brought to life by a mix of stop-motion animation and a giant claw and a giant head for certain close-up shots. <laughs> Oh 
It's similar to how they brought King Kong to life back in 1933. I love stop-motion effects because it's a visual effect where you can see the craftsmanship on screen. Not that there's no craftsmanship with CGI, there is, CGI is very hard to do, but with stop-motion effects, all those actions on screen had to be done by hand. <laughs> Just thinking about all the time and hard work it takes to do a simple movement with stop-motion animation, it's mind-blowing to me. The design of Q is well done. It's in that simple but effective category that I like in my monster movies. <laughs> Now, the thought of this giant monster flying around New York City with only a few people seeing it is kind of funny, but the film explains that. I like to think it'd be just smart enough to fly uh, right in line with the sun, so when people look up at it, it's blinded for a minute. It's a silly explanation, but at least it's an explanation. It's also funny how most of the characters have no problem believing that there's this giant monster flying around the city. You know, something I don't quite understand. You don't seem at all surprised by this. Why is that? What is this, Tokyo? As silly as that is, it's kind of refreshing. There are so many horror movies and monster movies that has characters being skeptical about whatever's going around killing people. Skepticism is fine in a character, but after a while it gets frustrating. It does get to a point where, at some point, the character has to believe that something weird is going on. People are getting killed by a monster, but some stubborn fuck doesn't want to believe it. In Q, people are getting snatched off of their roofs. There are witnesses seeing some strange flying thing. The main characters are willing to look into it. It's still silly, but in the best way. Shit. Oh, now, the monster isn't on screen throughout the entire movie, so as is the case with monster movies, there are a lot of scenes with human characters. The way to keep a monster movie entertaining, even when the monster is not on screen, is by giving the audience interesting and entertaining characters. We've got that here. That Constitution doesn't mean a goddamn thing in a prison, you got that? Exactly. I think you miss the place, don't you? I think you miss it. You like it up there. You like the treatment, don't you? That's why all you guys go back, isn't it? We have David Carradine and Richard Roundtree playing the detectives on the case. Guaranteed entertainment from those two. But then we have Michael Moriarty as Jimmy Quinn. I love this guy. <laughs> The character of Jimmy is a bit of an asshole, but in an entertaining way. It's okay to make your main character an asshole if you make them entertaining, you make them intriguing, you give a reason why they're an asshole, or at the bare minimum, you give them some redeeming qualities. Michael Moriarty is the master at mumble acting. When he mumble acts, it's, it's just fun and it feels so natural coming from him. Well, go ahead, uh, help yourself. Oh, thanks. Good. Do something. You know, I... Oh, right, I will. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't hurt the piano like them rock singers. <laughs> <laughs> they hurt pianos. <laughs> I treat them real nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. Uh, play something, huh? The scenes where David Carradine and Michael Moriarty are working off of each other are some of my favorite scenes in the movie. They have good chemistry. You're Eisenhower, right? This is D-Day. We're your soldiers. Tell us what to do. What I do is I get a whole fleet of helicopters. <laughs> you want to hear the rest? <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Fleet of helicopters. Jimmy is the guy who finds out where the monster is hiding, and he uses that information to make some demands from the city. You think we give you immunity for crimes we don't even know about? Yeah, didn't Ford uh, pardon Nixon for anything and everything? I'm just asking for a Nixon-like pardon. Jimmy is a jackass, but he's also a bit of an underdog, so you can't help but root for him 
a little bit. Plus, he does have some redeeming qualities. Y he is a crook, but he does not want innocent people to get hurt. To an extent, mind you. He will hold off on some information in order to get a little money out of it. One million dollars in cash tax-free. And you pay the taxes on it. I suppose if you pay the taxes, I gotta pay the tax on the tax, but you can work that out with the IRS. I have never paid tax in my life, and I'm not about to start now. The scenes without the monster are so well done with the characters and the dialogue that we don't even notice that the monster's not on screen. And then when the monster shows up, yay, we're having monster fun again. <laughs> Q the Winged Serpent is not a perfect movie, but it is an entertaining one. The monster is good, the characters are good, the pacing is good. It's just good. Good in that fun B-movie way. I say get your friends together and watch Q for a B-movie night. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of 17. The kills mostly consist of people getting eaten by Q, but we also have some death by gunshots, hearts getting cut out, and people getting skinned. Q is a good movie monster. The stop motion is well done, and the creature has a good design. The characters are all fun to watch, especially Michael Moriarty as Jimmy. They all work well off each other. There are chunks where the monster isn't on screen, but the movie keeps us interested with the dialogue and the characters. I love the New York setting. I'm a sucker for city-based horror movies. And the movie has good pacing, which I always like to praise. I'm giving this a 4.2 out of 5. It's just a well-done monster movie. B-movie fans will enjoy this one. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching and supporting my channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your favorite city-based monster movie. This is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. I have no rhythm.